This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and in this Citadel Contrast Painting tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Death Guard Plague Marines to accompany those pox walkers we did a couple of months ago. Now if you've not seen these tutorials before, they are designed at kind of more novice painters like me who perhaps don't enjoy this aspect of the hobby as much and want a faster and easily replicatable version of painting to get their models to tabletop standard. And we're going to be using the Citadel Contrast Paint range with a little bit of dry brushing and weathering on top. So this should be able to get your kilty or your army ready to go, just like these fellows that we've got here. Now, as all great miniatures start, we're going to be using some spray undercoat and we're going to be using the obvious Death Guard green in a decent temperature, ideally, not too hot, not too cold, with a good shake of the spray can to get a nice even finish. And we're going to follow that up with some wonderful Militarum green contrast paint. Now, that is going to go over all of our plate armor sections in a nice even tone. Now, as always, I always say, Ignore the Citadel kind of one thick coat tagline. It's not relevant. It's not accurate, especially for these kind of power armored Marines. You want to treat this more like an ink wash. You want to get a nice even coverage over all of the armor, avoiding any pooling where you can. So you can get this nice deep green tone to offset the kind of shinier metallics we're going to be using later. So as you can see, nice even coverage. And of course, because it's Death Guard, we need to kind of grubby it up and it won't be the last time I say that. So Agrax Earthshade Wash is what we're going to be using here once that green has dried. And again, we're going to get a nice even coverage. You can go as heavy as you want with this, but I'm just going to get a nice smooth tone. Again, trying to avoid it pooling in any of the lower areas of the miniature or around any of this gorgeous detail. I love these miniatures. And once that has again dried, we're then going to follow it up with a dry brush just to pop some of those raised areas and give a little bit more definition to these kind of old, outdated, segmented armor planes that are from the Horus Heresy era. And we're going to use Nurgling Green for that. Now, you could use a variety of green dry brushes. I want to use the minimum amount of paints possible for this tutorial just to make it nice and accessible. So this is going to be using a small dry brush, get most of the paint off your brush and just go against the grain. And just remember, dry brushing all the way through this tutorial, less is more. Do a little bit with a little bit on your brush. If it needs a little bit more, you can go back. It's always easier to do that than to put too heavy a dry brush on and then try and fix it afterwards. And as you can see, we've already got some beautiful kind of armor coloration here that we're going to kind of weather a little bit later. Now for most of this tutorial I'm using an army painter regiment brush. I'm going to use a slightly more detailed brush here as I do the metallics because Balthazar gold is quite a strong brass color and we need to go through all of those edges of the armor that would have this metallic such as the shoulder pads, such as the ridges of the armor that you can see me kind of turning the miniatures to catch the side of my brush and any areas such as the bells that they've got all around them because they love their tunes. Now be very careful with this, take your time. You might need to do a second coat if it's kind of a little bit thin over the green. Just try and get that detail where you can, especially around the knees and the arms. You can see the right arm there, I need to go back and finish a little bit later. But just try and take care with it and make sure you don't overlap and go on where you've done the green. Secondly, we're going to follow it up with Lead Belcher. Now, this is going to go over anywhere else that needs a metallic tone in a silver coloration. So, such as the chains, parts of their bolt guns, their swords. Many of them have got so many spikes coming out of them. Now, you'll need to make a conscious decision here which spikes you want to be a bony color and which you want to be a metallic. So, for me, I'm using the spikes on the side of his armor as kind of metallics, and the one in his shoulder, his knee, is going to be a bony color. We then need to grub these up again, so we're going to use Null Oil for the silver and we're going to use Reikland Flesh Shade for the brass. Now both of these paints do come with a gloss version, we see like in Citadel's tutorials they always kind of use the gloss one. Honestly, I don't see much of a difference. Um, it's entirely up to you. Whatever you've got on hand and whichever is the cheaper pot, I suppose, go with that. Uh, we're going to be dry brushing afterwards anyway, so it really doesn't make too much difference. We just want to sink this into all the nooks and crannies, all the decays and dents to try and make sure we get some definition. Now, Reikland Flesh Shade is a fantastic color to go over brass. Just be very careful that you don't let it pull too heavily. Otherwise, it creates this kind of brownie tone that you might not necessarily want. But that being said, I am being quite liberal about where I'm putting this. Like if it overlaps some of the segments, it won't hurt it too much because it will just sink into the recesses and create a bit more definition between the green and the brass. And you can see already we've got some really lovely colors on this miniature. 
Now both of those metallics are going to get a really light dry brush with lead belcher. You can see me getting most of the paint off my brush again. I'm just going against the grain, trying to pick out some of the rivets, trying to pick out some of the aspects of the chains and the blades, and just trying to get a little bit of that kind of edge popping with coloration. Now we are going to be adding all manner of rust and like oxidation, oxidation, oxidization effects uh, a little bit later. But for now, we're just trying to clip all these areas, especially at the edges of the bells and that to give them a little bit of a shine where the light would be hitting. Just be careful not to go too heavy over your green areas. You definitely don't want to be undoing the good work you've got there. It might look like chip paint work, but that's kind of not really what we're looking for here. So just try and focus specifically on these areas that we've highlighted. Now we're going to go back to our contrast paints here. And the first one we're going to use is Citadel's Black Templar, of course. Um, this is probably going to need two coats. Um, it's not something that you can do one coat because as you know with the contrast paints they're a little bit uh, see-through so they allow the colour underneath to shine through and this green does want to shine through Black Templar so I'm going to apply two coats here which is a rarity I usually say just one um, but actually rather than waiting for it to dry I'm going to cheat a little bit here and I'm just going to slap two coats on one after the other because I've got the studio lighting and it dries this really quickly. You might want to wait kind of 10 minutes, 15 minutes for it to dry before coming back but it just allows us to get that kind of black colour on the bolters. Some of these characters have other areas such as piping you might want to do black as well. However, for everything else that's going to get a contrast paint, we need to put a contrast base coat on. And you can use either Grey Seer or Wraith Bone. It honestly doesn't matter. My general rule of thumb that I've learned after doing all these videos is Grey Seer is great for things that aren't alive, such as automatons or undead. Wraith Bone is great for things that are alive because it adds that warmth underneath. Death Guard are kind of in between. So it doesn't make any difference. But this is for any of the tentacles, any of the bony spikes, smoke body parts that they've got adorned any kind of like trinkets they've got you just want a smooth coat water it down a little bit do two thin coats if we were to quote our master lord and savior duncan and yeah any of their cloaks and things that are going to be purple as well so you can see nice even coverage here because these contrast paints want to sit on this and they want to kind of stretch and contrast into these areas so for the bony areas we're going to use agros dunes we're going to avoid screaming skull because it's a little bit too light for what we want to do agros dunes is a nice dirty yellowy bony color like a real kind of off bony color so that's going to go on all of our protrusions our badges any trinkets some of them have got kind of like little bug trinkets on them anything that you want to be that kind of bony color and we're going to make sure that we get that paint to sit in the recesses so it looks a little bit darker where it's coming out of the armor for the purple of the robes, we're going to be using Shish Purple or Shish? Shish Purple. Now, this paint is the one that you might want to use the contrast medium with. I'm not using it in this tutorial because I don't want to overcomplicate things. However, if you do this too heavy, it can look a little bit black in areas. So just be aware of that. You could highlight up with a dry brush to cover this. This guy's hard to dry brush the purple because it's like, you know, right between where his legs is. But uh, if you have some Xerxes purple, I think it's called, you know, people who've got cloaks, you could easily highlight if you go too heavy. But I'm just applying one coat, making sure I get a nice even coverage on it to give that kind of purple some definition. Speaking of purples, we're going to go on to, oh, I can't pronounce any of these. Magos, Magos, Majos, Majos purple I'm going to go with this time. And that is for the tentacles. Now you can see on the note, I've also kind of put in Gilliman Flesh. If you've got a bigger tentacle area, you might want to do a little bit of blending between Gilliman Flesh and this Magos, Magos purple because it'll allow that more fleshy tone. If you want a really good example to see that, have a look at our Poxwalker video, which I'll put a link to in the corner of the screen, where you can check out where I've done that, where they've got slightly more kind of flesh into tentacle protrusions. For the Death Guard though, they've just got tentacles coming out of everywhere, but they're little kind of curly bits. So I've just used the purple uh, to cover them. And then finally, for their eyes, we're going to use uh, Griffhound Orange, which is, pardon the pun, a great contrasting tone for them. Now, we're going to put quite a heavy coat into these eye sockets because they've got great detail here, and it allows them to kind of show that they've got this kind of like really ethereal glow under their helmets. Now, some of the models have also got kind of smoke or uh, incense burning. You could use all manner of colors. You could use greens or blues here. I'm going to use an athematic blue because it's a great color to go against the uh, brass and the green that we've got so far and it's just an awesome color I try and use this whenever I can because it's just a beautiful one when it dries it sets really nicely and you can kind of dry brush it to a beautiful color and you could leave him right there that's tabletop ready but we're going to start dry brushing and weathering a little bit just to add a little bit more depth 
So we need to use, with the contrast paints, it's good to have one or two dry brushes that go over pretty much most of the miniature. And these are going to be your Shabdi Bone and Screaming Skull. So everything we've just painted with contrast paints is going to get a coverage of this. Quite light and even lighter for the Screaming Skull. But your Shabdi Bone is going to go over any of the flesh that you've done with Gilliman Flesh, any of the tentacles, any of the purples, any of the bone. And then we're going to go over with your Shabdi Bone, uh, going over with the Screaming Skull, sorry, over of the incense to give them a little bit of a whiter tone and a little bit to the higher areas of these tentacles and bones and even yes even the gun now you could use dawnstone if you want to go with the gray but again minimizing the amount of paints that we use screaming skulls fine just adds a bit of definition on the bolt gun picks out all those nice lovely details and again you could stop here if you wanted to that's perfectly fine for this miniature he looks great to me um but we're going to filthy up because this is the fun part of the death guard so rise of rust Nyluk Oxide and Gawthor Brown are going to be our friends here. Now, it's hard to explain the technique I'm using here. It's kind of like a stippling dry brush. So you can see me with my paper here, getting most of the riser rust off and just kind of stippling dry brushing in areas of these metallics to try and make them look a little bit more grubby. I'm focusing on chains, blades, the bells. I'm avoiding the actual green armor because that doesn't need it. But you can go as heavy or light as you want here. The one that's a bit more tricky to use is Nylac Oxide. So I'm using a smaller brush here. And the trick with Nylac Oxide that I found, when I started using it, I put it on too heavy. And it just makes this really bright, uh, bright blue tone. It looks like the athematic blue. Whereas the trick is to actually put a little bit on your brush and actually brush it into the crevices of the armor and the decayed areas of the chains and that that you want it to. And that will spread that blue so it doesn't look as bright. If you want it to look bright, like a power sword, like the, his sword or his armor here, by all means. But under that knee pad, you can see me just working it around and into the chains and the parts of the gun casings just to make it kind of sit into the recesses. Now, if you don't like the way this looks when you've put it on, obviously you can easily cover up your sins with Riser Rust again, which is exactly what I think I do on his sword. But uh, areas like the bell, it goes really nicely on the brass if you do a thin area and just kind of brush it in. And to be honest, the more haphazard you are with this, chances are the better it'll look. It's one of those things with weathering that if you overthink it, it doesn't look as good. Um, now, Gawthor Brown is our muddy kind of just filth tone, basically. Uh, that's there to make him look a bit more grubby. You could use Doom Bull or you could use um, another darker brown, but essentially Gawthor is just a nice one that's uh, there to grub him up. Uh, Mornfang's a good option as well. But you can go as heavy as you want. If you're doing the Death Guard Terminators, like the Death Shroud guys, you can go to town with all this weathering because they've got like the oldest armor in the crew, haven't they? Um, now, to base, if you want to copy the basing, I'll flash this up quickly, but you don't need to go too much into it. I used Astro Granite, gave it an Agrax wash, a dry brush of Dawnstone and Screaming Skull, and then just put Steel Legion Drab around the base. Um, it's nice and easy, and it goes against that green armor. And here we have our finished article, ready and raring to go. A uh, little bit of painting time. You can see me putting a little bit of Blood for the Blood Glod on the uh, flesh, just because I didn't want to paint the detail and I wanted to make it look like they just you know, severed a head and wore it. But you can see these guys with their Poxwalker mates. And I'd say you could probably rack out about five of these models, excluding drying time in probably about an hour and a half of painting. Because realistically, these contrast paints are nice and easy. And most of what you're doing is just washes and dry brushing. So you're just waiting for things to dry. Um, but yeah, I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. If you've got any questions, I will pop it in the comments below. And thank you for watching. We will definitely catch you in the next one, guys. Take care. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for watching our content. It means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.